this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and I'm recording this walkthrough video for students in my undergraduate criminology course uh, as we go through an assignment in which we take a look at media reports of crime, compare that to FBI reports of crime, both for the year 2014, and we take a look at similarities and differences in the relative frequency of reports of different kinds of crime in these two uh, sources of information. So here we're taking a look at uh, the first paper assignment. This is going to be due on October 25th, so we have a lot of time to work on it. And I'm going to show you today just uh, a few examples of how to go through the initial steps. Uh, you're going to gather data and then you're going to make an argument about that. Now making an argument about that, it requires your own original thinking. But I'm going to help you get the data because it's a little bit of a a trick and I want you to do it for a newspaper that's different than the one that I'm going to end up using uh, in today's example. But let's go through those first few steps together step by step. The first step is to find a newspaper for an American city of at least 100,000 population. How do we do that? Uh, how do you well there's a list. Uh, let's follow the link and open it up. It's going to take us to a page which is a list of newspapers serving cities over 100,000 in population. Great. What could we ask for that could be more? There are a lot of cities that are, have more than 100,000 population. Boston, Buffalo, Hampton Roads, Virginia, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, which one are you going to want to choose? That's up to you. You might want to pick one you're interested in. Maybe a place you've heard of or a place you used to live. Or some place that's completely random sometimes is fun. I'm going to take a look at the A's here. And I'm going to look at two newspapers. The Ann Arbor News and the Austin American Statesman. In Austin, Texas and Ann Arbor, Michigan, respectively. Um, I'm going to choose two because in the second step, I'm supposed to go to the Electronic News Bank ProQuest newsstand. And I'm supposed to um, use that using my University of Maine system account access. And I'm supposed to verify that all the articles from the year 2014 are actually included in the database, because they might not be. Uh, not all newspapers are included in that database. And if they aren't, then you need to go find yourself another city. There's really no way, uh, way around that. So let's follow the link in step two. Let's go to the University of Maine library system. Now, I'm already logged in. You may not be. So in uh, your experience, you may be asked to log in, probably at the point where you find the link for ProQuest Newsstand, and you click it, and then you'll be asked to supply your uh, University of Maine system uh, username and password. What could be simpler? Then you should be in, and you should see uh, an area like this. Well, we're looking for one of two publications to see if at least one of them is included in the database. How do we do that? Well, let's go to publications. Let's click on that link right underneath the title. Let's type in the Ann Arbor News. We're looking for a publication. It's a publication search. We're looking for that in the title. Oh, it doesn't list anything. Well, maybe I should take out the word the, uh, just to be sure. Let's search again. Nothing. Okay. Sometimes in searches like this, frustration is the end. And then you have to go back to the beginning and find something else. Like, let's try the Austin American Statesman. Perhaps I'll be studying Texas today uh, in the title. Okay, great. We've got two publications. Oh, one is the main newspaper and the other is a set of blogs for the newspaper. Well, we want the main newspaper and we want to make sure we get full text coverage so that we can look at everything that's in the newspaper. So look, there's full text coverage. Great. From January 1st, 1989 to the present. I love it. That's great. So we know we're going to work with the Austin American Statesman. What do we do next? Look, we're already on to step three. This is super. Using the advanced search option in ProQuest Newsstand, report a count of all articles published in the year 2014. 
Okay. How are we going to do that? Well, the first thing it says to do is look use the advanced search option in ProQuest Newsstand. So let's go back up there and look. Oh, advanced search right under the title of ProQuest Newsstand. Okay, here we are at advanced search. Uh, now there are a number of fields, but perhaps the most important one for us at the start is uh, the one at the top. It's a big, long field in which we could type anything. I'm going to type Austin American Statesman. And I don't want that to occur anywhere. I want that to be in the publication title. So I'm for looking for all kinds of articles that are in the Austin American Statesman. But not just any old time. I'm looking for particular publication dates. So notice here this box here, publication dates. I don't want all dates, so I'm going to click that and change it to a specific date range starting with January 1st, 2014 and ending December 31st, 2014. The first day and the last day of the year and everything in between. And then I'm going to search. And then ah, I have a number. Great. 16,797 results. I have my first number. 16,797. Well, but where am I going to put that? Well, when I like to store pieces of information, I like to put them in a spreadsheet. Uh, I like to do that because when I have my spreadsheet, um, I can uh, store information in particular places. I can organize it, and sometimes I can mess around with it a little bit and turn it into new pieces of information. So I'm going to use a spreadsheet. You don't literally have to in order to succeed here, but I'm going to show you why a spreadsheet might be useful. And uh, in the syllabus, I describe uh, the ability of, uh, that you have as a University of Maine at Augusta student to get Microsoft Office absolutely free. Microsoft Office has a spreadsheet program called Microsoft Excel. And uh, once you install it on your computer, or if you don't have a computer, when it's, it, once you use the um, uh, University of Maine Student Labs with Microsoft Excel already installed, you just have to know where to find it. To do that, uh, you'll hit the Start key, and you will just then start typing Excel, which is E-X-C-E-L. Oh, and look, there it is. Uh, the version I have is Excel 2013. A little bit old, but it'll still work. I hear Excel 2016 is coming out. Big deal. So I'm right-clicking there, and it says I can open it in a new window. Great, let's do that. And when I do that, I see lots of little tiny boxes. I'm, I'm going to make those bigger just for display so you can see what I'm doing in this video. There, I made the boxes bigger. Now, each of these boxes is one in which if I just click on the box and then start typing, I could put in text, I could put in numbers. I could even put in, if I wanted to do some kind of calculation, like a calculator would, I could say, I want to know what 8 plus 3 is. And it turns back 11. Uh, that's great. Uh, it means you can do a lot of things with the information in here. Um, well, let's clear those out right now, because that's not what we want for this assignment. We want to take that number, 16,797, and put it in. Now, I like to do something, which is use the first column to um, describe the number. It's kind of, it's what's called a, often a header or a, a descriptor column. You can call it what you will, but 16,797. I'm going to double check. Is that the right number? Yes. That is the number of articles in the Austin American Statesman in 2014. Now, if I just hit enter, it'll put it in. Oh, it looks like it got cut off. It didn't disappear, though. If I use my arrow keys and I just navigate right back up to that box, you'll notice there's a little tiny box up above where all that information is saved. 
So now I know exactly what that number is. So when I save my file, I can always go back to it and the next day I'll know what the number meant. If I don't describe a note for it, I'll never know what it was I was doing. And that could be a disaster. So this is good. Uh, what else do we need to do? Let's go back to the assignment. It says, oh, there's a comma, and then it says there's more. Now I need to find all articles written in 2014 containing a reference to crime. Well, now I need to decide what search terms are appropriate for this. How do I know that an article contains a reference to crime? Well, it could have the word crime in it. Um, let's try that. Um, to do that, I'm going to want to look under here, under the uh, big text uh, search box. I can modify my search. It saves everything I've done so far, and I can go back and add something. So you see Austin American Statesman is still in there. You can see the date range still there. Now there's this field that says and. Well, I could say and crime. And I don't want it to be anywhere, so I'll select document text because I want to find crime in the document text. And I'm going to search. I just scroll down and look for the search button, and it gives me 628 results. Now I'm curious. Will I get more than that if I include crime or an adjective of, to describe crime, which is criminal? So let's modify the search. Not just crime, but let's look for Austin American Statesman and crime or the word criminal. Oh, look, that takes us up another 400. So that, that, that is a term we want to include. Let's, let's look through those reports to see if they look right. Crime hotspots. Mm -hmm. Criminal court. Criminal justice community, crime for non-therapeutic reasons, yeah. Arrest suspects for a crime. Excellent. How rampant is crime downtown? Very good. And you'll notice that uh, ProQuest Newsstand searches for plurals of your form, so it included not just criminal, but criminals, not just crime, but crimes, which is great. Okay. Now let's modify the... Oh, oh, I have a number. Let's not just modify the search. Let's write down the number, 1,094. And what is that number? Okay, I'm putting it in the second column because I'm going to describe it in the first column. That is the number of articles in the Austin American Statesman in 2014 that have the word crime or criminal in the text. So I will always remember what that number meant. And then I'm going to want to save my file. Always save your file uh, frequently. So now I need to head back to the assignment and know what I collect next. Oh, I need to collect the total number of articles written on each of the following types of crime. Murders and non-negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, theft, and motor vehicle theft. And it says I'll have to decide what search terms are appropriate to use in order to gather these counts. Ah, here's the rub. When someone describes a, a killing in a newspaper and it's a murder, they call it a murder, right? But when someone engages in non-negligent manslaughter... Are they really going to write non-negligent manslaughter? Well, they might, but we should find out. So let's go use the search term uh, modifier here. Let's modify the search. And instead of just crime and criminal, let's take a look at that word manslaughter. Let's see what comes up next to it. There's all kinds of stuff. Intoxication manslaughter. Manslaughter cases. 
Do I see anything about negligent or non-negligent manslaughter? I'm not seeing it. It looks like they just say, they call it manslaughter. And then there's this modifier that they add to something called intoxication manslaughter. And we can find out what intoxication manslaughter is. Oh, that's a fatal crash. So that's like negligent uh, manslaughter, which is not what we want. Negligent manslaughter means you kill someone because you made a, a mistake that would have been foreseeable, like you should not drink and then drive, or you should not put a big hole in front of your house without a warning um, that some kid could fall into. That would be negligent manslaughter. But we're looking for non-negligent manslaughter. Well, maybe if we modify the search again, let's see what happens if we just type in non-negligent manslaughter. How many results do we get? Oh, one. That's not going to work. Okay, so let's go back and modify that out. What we need to do is we need to exclude the term intoxication manslaughter, right? Um, so we want manslaughter and we want murder. <sighs> we don't want to forget the word murder. But now, look, there's this term here that says add a row. Let's click that because it's going to let us add another condition. And this time, let's select the condition not. What that means now is that we want the Austin American Statesman, we want it for a date range in the year 2014, and we want it to have the terms manslaughter or murder in the text, but now we want it not to have ne uh, intoxication manslaughter, and we don't want it to have negligent manslaughter. in that document text. So now we're saying what we don't want as well as what we do want. You notice I uh, am asking you at the bottom of step three to decide what search terms are appropriate and to note your decisions. You're going to want to write this down. You're going to want to provide a justifiable reason. Think through this. And it may be different for different newspapers in different parts of the country that have different standards and procedures and practices and histories and cultures. So you're going to have to look in and see what works and gets you something that is pretty close to what you're interested in. That's the, what social research has to do. Uh, so let's now click search. We're pretty confident about our terms here. Oh, great. We get a number. 421. Okay, so that number, 421, what does that give us? Uh, that is the number of articles, again, in the Austin American Statesman that are about murder all that contain reference to murder or non-negligent manslaughter. And ah, the number is 421. Okay, what do we do next? Well, it, it will tell us to go collect those for all those different kinds of crime, but I want you to go through a similar step, similar reasoning for all those different kinds of crime. I'm going to stop at murder, and I'm going to skip ahead to four. I was going to tell me to visit the American Fact Finder webpage, and find and report the estimated 2014 population for the city you selected. The city I selected is Austin, Texas, so I'm going to click that link. Oh, okay, and it says, oh, under community facts, I can find popular facts like, haha, population about your community. Well, this isn't my community, but I'm going to pretend it is. Austin, Texas. I'm typing it in, and look. Oh, there's an option that just drops down, Austin City, Texas. I'll select it and hit go. And now it'll give me the 2010 population, which is no good because I want the 2014 population. I don't want this 790,390. 
I want 2000. Oh, look, just keep reading down. 2014 population estimates. I'll click there. And here we are. Here's the population estimate. Wow. From 2010 to 2014, it's grown a lot, all the way up to 912,791. 912,791. Austin population 2014. Another number for my collection. Okay, great. So now that we have this, I can close the number I can move on to step five click here to access preliminary FBI data oh okay and then it says okay and I can find the data for the city you've selected in steps one and two okay I'll do that here's the preliminary report and it said, look for table four. So I'm going to look for table four. And it says I'm leaving for another website. Okay, that's fine. And Texas is in Oklahoma through Wisconsin. And I'm going to find Texas. And Austin's not there. What's going on? Well, this is preliminary data, and sometimes it's not going to be there. That's so frustrating. But, fortunately, just this last week, we got the regular Crime in the United States report, which is why um, we have an updated assignment that says, oh, you can find FBI data for your city in the newly released Crime in the United States 2014 report. Table 8. Let's go look for that. Okay, there's a link in your assignment, but here is the final crime in the United States 2014 report. Um, how would I find tables? Uh, offense tables? Yes, that gets me there. And here's table 8. Oh, offenses known to law enforcement by state by city, 2014. Let's see if Austin shows up this time. The answer, by the way, is going to be yes. Because the final data is uh, a much better count with many, many cities, including cities with a population of 2,000, 3,000, very small places. But now we just have to find Austin. Oh, and there it is. Wow. Okay. So now we have a murder count of 32. I know that because I'm looking right here. The murder count is one uh, light row, two light, one light column, two light columns over. And I'm going to go down to Austin and I see the number 32. So I know that in Austin, murder and non-negligent manslaughter. 32 again? 32. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter. That's the right number. Great. So now I'm going to do that for all the other crimes, which are listed here in the same table. Super. And what can I do? I'll go back to the assignment. Now you're going to collect all that information, not just murder. And it says from these figures... Calculate the percentage of all UCR Part 1 crimes in the city that fall into each of these categories of crime. Oh! Okay. Haha. <laughs> I, I, I need to find out what all the UCR Part 1 crimes are in order to get that. So let's get that one more piece of information. All UCR Part one crimes, and we'll need to know if we include all of those crimes, what all the violent crimes are, and all the property crimes are. That's a handy way to add them up. So 3,581 plus 
a larger number, 37,444. So I can use Excel as a calculator now. And I can say, let's add 3,581. Okay. Oh, I'll put an equal sign to get it to calculate. Equals 3,581 plus 37,444. Yes. So I'll put those in, and then I get the answer back, 41,025. Great. Now, what can I start to do here? Okay. Uh, once I've gathered all this information, I have some information on the Austin population. I have some information on the... Uh, Austin American Statesman. And you're going to collect similar data for all these other offenses. Well, I have to go back here and see what I have to do. Okay. Uh, for step three, I'm going to do something with it. I'm not just going to collect them. I'm going to calculate the percentage of all articles in the newspaper that are written on crime. Okay, so here are all the articles. Here are the ones written on crime. Let's clarify that. Right, so these are the ones on crime, and these are just all the articles. What percentage of this big number is this little number? Well, I could give this row, I could call them percentages. All those are the percentages. And so to calculate a percentage, I take the little number, 1,094, and I'm going to put it in parentheses, dividing it by 16,797 and parentheses. So take the little number on top, the big number on the bottom, and I multiply it by 100 to make that share a percentage. It turns out the percent of articles in the Austin American Statesman in 2014 of all of them that have crime in them is 6.5 percent. And that makes sense. 1,094 looks like about 6.5 percent of 16,797. Okay. What's the next percentage I need to calculate? Oh, okay. Uh, it says also calculate the percentage of the Newspapers, articles about crime that mention each category of crime. Oh, so now the big number is 1,094. And the question is, of all those 1,094 articles, what percentage of them refer to murder, refer to rape, refer to burglary, refer to robbery? Well, let's find out. We're going to take 421. Now, oh, and put it in parentheses. Divide that by 1,094 and multiply it by 100. And we'll find out that, wow, 38.48% of all the articles in the American Statesman that mention crime or criminal are also talking about a murder. So murder is the big, this is a big uh, portion of all the uh, crime articles are articles about murder. You got something good to know about newspapers. Well, I can do the same thing if I look down at step five. It's going to ask me to calculate the percentage of all the UCR Part 1 crimes in this city that fall into each of these categories of crime, that murder, non-negligent manslaughter, rape, robbery, so on and so forth. So here are all the crimes. And here's the murder. So what percent of all UCR Part 1 crimes are murders? Well, I'm going to find out by typing in equals and put inside parentheses the little number over the big number and multiply that in parentheses. Then, whoop, excuse me, I'm going to start again. 32 divided by 41025 
and then multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. Okay, so what that tells me, that's a percentage. 0.078% of all the crimes that happened in Austin, Texas, were murders or non-negligent manslaughters. Compare that percentage to the percentage of all articles about crime that are about murder. And you'll begin to see that there are going to be some differences. And I want you to understand what those differences are, to describe what those differences are, uh, and to think about the consequences of that. What's the importance of those differences? I want you to do that not just for murder and non-negligent manslaughter, but for rape, for uh, motor vehicle theft, which is probably not going to be called motor vehicle theft in the newspapers. You'll have to think about the wording. Okay, And com not just compare, contrast, considerable, consider the reasons for that. Uh, and I want you to apply what you've learned so far in your textbook and in the lecture so far in our class. I want you to write up an actual paper about it in which you show all your work, but you then write about it as well. And that's what makes it a paper and not simply an assignment. I look forward to your work. Uh, I, I want to see what you're able to show me uh, about uh, the city that you choose. And I'll learn something new this year, which is great. It's one of the great things about teaching you. So... Uh, again, good luck. And if you have any questions while you're working on this uh, paper, please let me know and I'd be glad to talk to you about it and help you through.